and welcome to my YouTube channel or whatever this whole thing is. My name is Joana, I'm from Romania, I'm 18 years old and I am or basically was before this whole thing a student in my final year of high school. And you know what that means, applying to university. Well, obviously, since you clicked on this video in the first place, you know what that means. So, you know, let's get right into the business. So, at the beginning of 12th grade, I've applied to study mathematics at the University of Oxford as an international student. And believe me or not, to be honest, I had zero expectations. I was so prepared to say and it went like, but then I realized that this is the beginning of a TikTok song and we're definitely not going that way. Okay, obviously you're not here to watch TikTok videos, so let's get into it. Before we take a look uh, into the application itself, there are a few things that I want to point out. Firstly, one of the most important things to take into consideration is the deadline to, you know, submit your application, your UCAS application, basically. Uh, while the normal deadline for almost all the UK universities is the 15th of January, um, Oxford and Cambridge have an earlier deadline, which is the 15th of October. So it's actually way earlier and you need to make sure that you've got everything um, sorted out before that deadline. Secondly, please, please, and please reach out to someone who has a little bit more experience into this college application process. For example, you can reach out to a current student. I remember how I literally asked everyone I know who was a UK student um, about every single little tiny thing that could have been useful in my own application journey. And now if I look back, oh man, how sorry I am for them. So if after you watch this video, you still have some questions, no matter how big or little, you can always ask me on Instagram, DM me, don't be shy at this thing right here. Okay, things being said, let's get into the real business. I will divide this video into three sections, which are the personal statement, the admissions exam, and the interviews. The first more complex thing that you would encounter while completing your UK application is the personal statement. Essentially, this is a 4,000 character essay about yourself and is basically your chance to stand out in front of the admissions team. One of the biggest obstacles I faced while writing this essay was the word limit. 4,000 characters or 47 lines, as they say, seems a lot, but it definitely is not. I had to condense a lot of information about myself and bring together stuff that initially seemed to have nothing in common. So my advice to you would be not to use fancy words or create metaphors just for the sake of impressing the ones reading your essay, because that's definitely not the point. Your actions, your activities, or what you gain from these past experiences need to be the ones that make a difference. I've got my personal statement right here in front of me, that's why I'm always looking in this direction. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to explain a little how I've organized my ideas and paragraphs. If you want to, I can make a separate video um, reading my personal statement and going even more in depth about this. Um, just let me know down in the comments. In your personal statement, you need to say why you want to study a specific subject, why you chose a specific major, and uh, what qualifies you for the spot of a student. Okay, so I've written six paragraphs. Firstly, there is the introduction. It's the only place in my essay where I allow myself to be, uh, to be a bit more poetical, as I would say. I talked a bit more general about what mathematics, which is my major of choice, means to me. And what exactly about my personality makes me so attracted to this subject. Um, for example, I read to you one sentence that I wrote. Um, so, I said... Being an analytical and rational person who strives to absorb and create new ideas, I have always been fascinated by the limitless possibilities solving a single mathematical problem gives someone. So as you can see, that's exactly what I've talked to you about before, just normal things, normal um, attributes of myself that make me want to study mathematics further. Okay, so um, the second paragraph included my top achievements in the field of mathematics, like the major competitions I took part in. Uh, one, one really nice trick um, that you can do in here is check Oxford website 
and go to your desired course, uh, check the tab called admissions requirements and scroll down until you find a section called what are tutors looking for. You can find here a series of qualities that are ideal to have in order to increase your chances of getting in. For example, here in my case, it says that the students ought to have the ability to think and work independently. So in this paragraph, it's um, more important to have some action effect type of things. I think it is easier to understand if I just read a part of something that I've written. So I said, my experience with the Olympiads made my intellectual curiosity rise way above the level of the classroom and developed my ability to work and think independently. See, see what I did in here? Okay. The third and fourth paragraphs included more interesting, unique things that I did that were related to some extent rather to mathematics. They were way shorter than the previous ones. This could be things like research you conducted, articles you wrote, problems you proposed, or even books or other articles that you have read before. The fifth paragraph was all about my extracurricular activities and how they were related to mathematics, even though, spoiler alert, they weren't at all. So, I've talked about my experience in music and sports, because um, you know, they include counting just as mathematics, they include numbers, so they definitely are related. I saved myself here by saying that these activities were just mathematics coming alive to me in a way that was so personal to me. I also briefly included my experience in debating politics and humanities, just for them to see that I was a well-rounded student, because that's an important thing for them to know that you can always uh, do something new and then you are not afraid to go out of your comfort zone. Lastly, my conclusion was pretty short and only said that um, I was looking forward to developing myself as a person, a mathematician, a friend and a leader if given this opportunity. Gosh, this was a lot. So, as cliché as it may sound, be yourself and find things that make you unique. This is what you should write about. So, moving on. Most courses at Oxford require an admission exam. It usually takes place at the beginning of November or um, late Welcome October. For maths, I uh, had to take the MAT on the 30th of um, October 2019. You need to sign up for this exam uh, by the same deadline as you have for uh, submitting the UCAS application, which is the 15th of October. This was by far the most stressful part of my application process, but I've come to realize this is by far the least important one. Once you are in a specific threshold, once your score reaches like this, this specific threshold, which is like, I think for mathematics it was like 65, 70, 75%, um, it all comes down to the interview. So I had absolutely no idea how to prepare for this exam, but I've somehow come up with a plan that I will share with you guys right now. Normally, if you search up Oxford's website for information about your exam, you um, should find the syllabus, which is all the topics that will be tested. Go for all of them, make sure you know the terminology and how in-depth they go with these concepts and uh, that you are able to solve basic problems regarding these concepts. After doing so, you can find a pretty lengthy collection of past papers on the university's website. Try solving them without looking at the solutions. After that, you can obviously look up uh, what you did wrong and how the problem should have been solved. After doing a few past papers, you will be able to do some under time conditions, which is say, the same as exam conditions. Also, one major tip is to begin with the oldest past papers and work your way until the most recent ones. Basically, what you need to do is work your way up instead of down. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but lately the tests have been much more difficult than in the past. Once you did all of them, you're basically good to go. If some problems or exercises are still unclear to you, reach out to a teacher or a fellow student to help you or even search a problem online, because there are even a bunch of YouTube videos that can be really useful and extremely well explained. <laughs> Thank you. 
Not gonna lie, the interviews are indeed the most important part of the application process. About 40% of the applicants get invited to an interview in Oxford during the month of December. I had five interviews, each of them being uh, 25 minutes long. And let me tell you, they are definitely not your typical type of interviews. They are purely academical. Once you go into that room, they might not even ask you anything about yourself. They would give you a problem to solve and that's that. Luckily, the tutors are all so nice and friendly and they, there's basically really nothing to be afraid of. Uh, they know you are nervous, they know this may be your first time verbally solving a problem and they do understand this. Uh, what you have to do is simply think out loud and these are the three words that you need to remember, think out loud. Any idea that you have regarding the proposed problem is welcome. They won't say that it is wrong and will try to help you develop it into actually solving the problem your way. Talk all the time and see everything going on in your mind out loud, even if that might be wrong. I've said it minus one times one equals one, so... You know, things happen. Um, the teachers want to collaborate with you. Um, they want to know if they would be able to work with you in the future. It honestly is a really nice experience that I would repeat at any time. You might ask, okay, but what do I do to prepare for the interviews? Usually, on the website, there are some generic problems to give you an idea about um, what the interview might be all about. Um, you can always go on student room and um, you can find there a bunch of proposed problems. You could solve them by explaining your thought process to your friend, to your teacher, or even to yourself looking in the mirror. Or if this doesn't feel really comfortable to you, that's fine, you can write down all the things that you might say in an interview setting. And that's exactly the same thing. One really helpful thing that I did in order to prepare for the interviews was to solve problems proposed at the British Mathematical Olympiad and to try to solve them in this way that I've said previously. It was honestly the best thing I could do because the problems were so similar. Also, if you're applying for mathematics or computer science or the joint school, um, there is uh, this book called Algorithmic Puzzles that you can find online in PDF. I'll uh, link it down below to check it out. The problems in the medium difficulty section are great to go through in your preparation for the interview. Um, some of my friends even got um, the same problem um, proposed in this book in their interviews and it was really cool for them, I guess. But don't tell anyone. Things being said, that's pretty much all I wanted to tell you about today. Um, if you still have some questions regarding the application process or anything in particular, don't hesitate to contact me on Instagram or leave a comment down below and I will make sure I will respond. Also, if you have new videos, ideas or suggestions, again, leave them down below, I will check them out. I hope you found this video helpful and that you're not feeling that stressed out and overwhelmed about this whole application thing. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. Um, good luck with your application and I'll see you in the next one.